Hey everyone, welcome back to Alfred's Basic Adult Piano Course, Lesson Book Level 1. This video is Lesson 63. We're going to cover page 71 in the book today. A new trick, followed by the piece, the can-can. All right, so before we get to the new trick here at the top, we are going to be working in the G major position again. And uh, specifically, we're going to focus on the right hand first. So as a review, the right hand in the C position placed your thumb on middle C, and that placed your fifth finger up here on G. For the G position, you're going to take your thumb to that G, and that's going to put two on A, three on B, four on C, and five on D. So you're going to want to put your right hand into the G position. And that's where we're going to start up here for a new trick. So the little example they give us here is uh, just below where it says new trick and above the can-can. That line is the treble clef, and that is the right hand in the G position. So changing fingers on the same note. Sometimes it is necessary to replay the same note with a different finger. Practice the following line to prepare for the can-can. So let's, let's go through this line first, and then we'll, um, I'll answer the question why you would want to change fingers on the same note. So our first note here is a D with our fifth finger. And we're just doing that for two uh, half notes, two counts each. But in the second measure, we're going to move our fourth finger to that D. Simply just move your hand over. When you do that, notice the hand position changes. I'm no longer in the G position. I'm sort of in this... A position, if you will. My thumb's now on A, two on B, three on C, four on D, and five on E. So once again, I'm, I'm going from five on D in the first measure, and I'm going to move the entire hand over. Now I have four on D. Now the reason for this is perhaps I'm starting in the G position, and I'm playing all five of these notes, G, A, B, C, and D with these five fingers, but maybe there's also an E. Now, I could go from D to E, but that's just not going to be very smooth, and it's kind of weak doing that with the fifth finger. But if I can move a fourth finger to D, especially if it's a repeated note, notice I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to be playing D with my fifth finger and then play it with my fourth finger, and that is so that I could get my fifth finger up to E. So if you have repeated notes, you know, this will, this will work for sure. Uh, and you'll see that just a moment in the can-can. So the uh, exercise we're doing is just the prep. You'll actually see it into play in just a moment. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but that's why you will change fingers. It's actually so you can move your hand position is what it is. Um, now let's do the same thing. Actually, um, this is pretty cool. When I move my four to D, my thumb is already on A for measure three. So here's my thumb on A in measure three for two counts, again for another two counts. And actually to get back down to the G position, I'm gonna move the last measure two on A. Notice when I do that, my hand is back in the G position. Okay, so you wanna go through that exercise a few times and just get used to this. Um, one really important thing is, you know, when you first learn um, out of this book, you can kind of get by for a long time with fingering, playing the note for you. So when you're in a locked position, say the G position, uh, and your hand's never going up or down, but you're only playing these five notes, what happens is you can get used to the thumb being a G, two being A, three being B, and five being D. So if you're going along in the music and you see five and you just assume it's D, you know, and then up here on this example where it says four on D, but what if you just saw four? You might say, oh, well, that's going to be a C. We're branching out of that. In this case, you have to read the note first before the fingering. So it's not always going to be assigned fingering from here on out. So in that first measure, it is a D with your fifth finger. The next measure, it's also a D, but it's going to be with the fourth finger. And we're going to really see why you would need to do this in the can-can. So go through this example several times just to get used to changing that finger. Um, and then the same thing with your thumb on A and then going to two on A. But instead of thinking of a finger change, it's really you're changing the whole position of your hand. So all your fingers are gonna move accordingly. So let's look at the can-can. Let's stick with the right hand. Um, we're on the key of G major. So you see the uh, key signature at the beginning, one sharp, 
that means all Fs are going to be sharp. So if we come across an F, um, we're automatically going to sharp that. Uh, it does start out in the G position, of course. So your first measure is your thumb on G, that whole note there. So on the second measure, it's pretty self-explanatory. That would be uh, the next note's an A, so that's your second finger on A. You're going to skip up to a C, so that's your fourth finger. And then come down to three on B, two on A. Now in the third measure, they're reminding us that it's a D with your fifth finger. Just like the exercise up above, two half notes. But look at the last measure, D with your fourth finger. And it's this next note, this E, that's why we did it. Now I can successfully get to E. But playing along and hopping around like this, this is actually doable, but not easy. It's smooth and it's, it's kind of unpredictable. A lot more control when you can move that four to the D and then your fifth finger's right there for this E. So that's really the whole point, um, at least in this, on this page, of why we're doing this. So after that five on E, you're gonna go back. Uh, so now you're, you're, you're temporarily in this other position. So that puts two on B, which is our third note in that measure. And that puts three on C, which is your next note. When you go down to the second line, they remind us A with your thumb. And that's where we're currently at. So two half notes there. But look in the second measure, A with two. So you're going to move the whole hand basically down to the G position. So there's your two on A, and your next note is four on C, which that four should be right there on C. And then we're just working our way down to B, A, and our third measure is G. Now here we have an octave in this measure. My thumb's on G, I'm going to reach up to five on this G. And that's what this second note is. You can either stretch or you can jump. If you can stretch, I'd say do that. It makes it smoother, of course. Any jumping involved obviously puts a break in the music. Now there are no slurs, so I don't think it matters, but personally speaking, I think it will sound better if, if it's smooth. Now there's a little red asterisk there. If you look at the bottom of the page, it says descending G major scale. Remember our previous lesson, lesson 62 on page 70. Uh, if you go down to the bottom of the page there, remember we played the uh, G scale on our right hand? All the way up to this G. And then we came back down, descending is what this is. And that's what you're gonna play right here in this piece. So starting on that second line, third measure, second beat, when you get up to that G, you're going down the scale. Note for note and the same fingering. So your second uh, note in that scale, which is actually the third note in this measure, that's F. Remember, it's gonna be F sharp because our key signature, all Fs are sharped. And then you have your third finger on E. And then the last measure, two on D. And here's where it gets tricky. If you remember, after your thumb on C, you're gonna to have to cross to your third finger on B. This is really important. And then continue two on A, and you'll successfully land thumb on G on the third line. Now, once you get to the third line, musically, you're repeating the same thing you did in the top line. So you can take a quick look and compare that all these notes you're about to play again, you just played on the top line. So in the second measure of the third line, you have an A up to C, and then B, and then A. In the third measure, it's gonna be a five on D again for two counts and another two counts. When you get to the last measure, they remind us four on the D. So move the whole hand over and then that puts five on E, two on B, three on C. And the bottom line is very similar to the second line. Thumb on A for two counts. Again, for another two counts. In the second measure, take your second finger and move it to that A. And remember, we're moving the whole hand when we do that. So that should put four on C, three on B, two on A, 
Your last two measures are a little different because it's the end of the song. So that third measure, it's G up a fifth. So that's D back down a fourth to A and then up one note to B. And then the last measure, G on beat one, quarter rest on beat two, G on beat three, quarter rest on beat four. So yeah, look carefully there at that second to last measure. It jumps around. G, D, A, B, and then G. So that's basically it with the right hand. Um, no complicated rhythms. Your, uh, your smallest rhythm in this piece is a quarter note. So all you've got are quarter notes, a couple half notes, a couple whole notes, and that's about it. Your, right, uh, your left hand is just um, three, uh, two chords? Yeah, yeah, it's just two chords. Let's review the left hand. Um, your left hand's in the G position as well. So here's middle C on the piano right here. Uh, the note below that's B. Below that is A, and below that is G. So that's where you want your fifth finger. So remember, here's your right hand. Your left hand is the same thing, one octave lower. So G position for your left hand. I'll make sure we got that first. So the only two chords you're playing in this piece in the left hand is a G chord, which is G, B, and D, and a D7 chord, which is that five finger on F sharp, C and D. Look at your first measure. That is a broken G chord in the first measure. So beat one, and we're in 4-4 four, four time here, beat one is five on G. The next three beats are the B and the D. So if you can play a G chord, you've got your fingering and notes already outlined. So five on G for beat one, and then three and one on B and D for beats two, three, and four. The second measure is that D7 chord. So when you do this, don't aim for the F sharp. Aim for the whole chord. So practice reviewing your G chord as a block chord, your D7 chord as a block chord. That way, when you get to measure two, you've already outlined it. So if your five's on F sharp, your two and thumb, two and one, are on C and D, ready to go. And then measures three and four back to the G chord. Now the second line is the D7 chord in two measures. And measure three is the whole G block chord only on beat one. When you start this descending scale, you should be off in your left hand. Notice the rest. So this scale, is a solo. When you get down to measure one on the third line, both hands will come in on G's. And this repeats, so that, like I said, the first line is the same as the third line, and that's true of the left hand. So the first measure in the third line is a broken G chord, and then the D7 chord, and then the G chord for two measures. Bottom line, two measures of the D7 chord, just like the second line. And then the last two measures are very different for the left hand as well. Block chords. So in the third measure, G chord on beat one, quarter rest on two. The D7 chord on beat three, quarter rest on four. And then the last measure, G chord on one, rest on two, chord on three, rest on four. So yeah, the G and the D7 chord is the only thing you need to know for the left hand. So if you know the outline of both chords, you're gonna be in pretty good shape. Now the hard work, of course, is putting the hands together. As easy as that left hand is, we all know by now that once you tie in the right hand and it's doing something different, it's not gonna be that easy. So let's look at the hands together. So like I said, the G position in both hands, make sure you've got that lined up. Remember that our right hand's going to shift to, I'll call it an A position briefly in the piece and back. But your left hand is not going to do that. Oh, well, your left hand gets out of it a little bit. One can argue the F sharp with your fifth finger is getting out of the G position, but very little movement involved there. So in the beginning, what's kind of cool in the first measure 
is that both hands are playing G's. As the left hand continues, the right hand needs to hold that whole note for four counts. So keep it planted there, the whole measure. But when we get to measure two, that's where the challenge starts to really begin. So when I go to measure two, like I said earlier, with your left hand, try not to go to F sharp. Try to go to the whole D7 chord. Practice it enough that you get the whole chord under your fingers. And you're gonna have that second finger on A in the right hand. Now, of course, when you play, don't hit the whole chord. F sharp and the A are together. So here is a measure you're gonna have to go really slow. You're gonna have to play, do vertical practice, line it up vertically before you play the, the correct rhythms and go smoothly through the music. In beat two, remember two, three, and four, the left hand plays a C and D. That's where you go up to the fourth finger in beat two to the C. So make sure you get that. Now your left hand's gonna stay there, but your right hand is descending one note at a time. So it's, it's moving to the B, and then it's moving to the A. And if, uh, if you have to do big movements with your hands and wrists to make that work, that's okay. When you go to the third measure, you're back to outlining that G chord in your left hand, going up to a D in your right hand. So actually, G in the left hand, D in the right hand is cool because they're the fifth finger in both hands. And you're actually just gonna hit that D twice right there. So you're not going far now in the right hand. Remember on beat two, you move to the B and D. And then stay there for beats three and four, hit the D again in the right hand. Now the real tricky part, because when I go to the fourth measure, I go back to the G with my fifth finger, but I move my fourth finger to that D in the right hand. So you might have to practice going from here, the end of measure three, to the beginning of measure four. And as I do that, move my whole hand to this, I'll call it the A position. So there I am on beat one in measure four, beat two, the right hand now plays E, the left hand plays B and D. Uh, what's kind of cool about this is you're sort of moving in the same direction with both hands. See, I'm here in both hands. Look, I'm playing to the right with both hands. So different arrangements of notes and fingering, but I'm, I'm moving this direction. So that helps a little bit with coordination. And now stay here in the left hand for beat three, but two on B in the right hand. And then three on C on beat four. So that's another measure that you're gonna have to practice. So basically the measures where it's busier in the right hand, the quarter notes, that's gonna get trickier, lining it all up. So don't, don't be afraid if you're thinking this is gonna to have to take a lot of repetition, that's normal. That's what it's gonna to have to take to really get this down. Uh, when you go to, so we, we, we ended the, the first line here. When you go to the second line, your thumb should already be on the A in the right hand. Your fifth finger extends to the F sharp, but remember, try to get the whole chord, the D7 chord. So there we are on beat one. Beat two is just left hand, C and D. And then beat three, stay on this A. Same notes in the, in the left hand. Now the second measure, I gotta move my two finger in the right hand to A. So I'm moving to the G position. I'm just staying in the same position in the left hand. Hit the F sharp in the left hand, two on A. So you might wanna practice going from, uh, let's see, the last thing in that first measure is right here. And switching to there. So you might wanna practice that a few times. On beat two in the second measure, you're going to go up to four on C. C and D in the left hand. And then you're going to come down to the B in the right hand on beat three, the A. And when you get to measure three, it's kind of like home base in a way. Because I've got a G chord all together in the left hand. i got thumb on G in the right hand. So remember what I said earlier, beat two, your left hand is off. And all of this chord, excuse me, all of this scale is like a solo all by itself. 
until I get to the third line. And remember, the third line and the first line are exactly the same. So this is all I'll repeat. Third measure, five on D in the right hand. Last measure, change that four to the D in the right hand. And then that puts five on E. C. Last line, fifth finger F sharp, left hand, thumb on A in the right hand. And the second measure, be careful with the right hand, changes to two on A. Left hand still the same chord again. So beat two, you got four on C, C and D in the left hand. Beat three, down to the B in the right hand. Beat four, down to the A. And then it's kind of like home base again on measure three, briefly, for one beat. On beat two, it's only the right hand. Five on D, your left hand's resting. And this is a tricky measure because now beat three, the D7 chord in the left hand, second finger on A in the right hand. And then beat four, only the B in the right hand with your third finger. And then the last measure is home base again. G chord in the left hand, G with your thumb in the right hand on beat one. Both hands rest on beat two. Beat three, both hands rest on beat four. Now, I've never even mentioned the song at the beginning, the Can Can. Um, some of you, now that we've gone through the lesson, may, may be familiar with it if you weren't at the beginning. But to me, this has always been a piece that's been played extremely fast uh, it's, it's like a famous dance where dancers are kicking up their legs in a whole line. Uh, and I've heard it played extremely fast sometimes, which is a lot of fun. A lot of fun to play it that way. However... However, <laughs> extremely difficult to get to that point, especially at this level, if this is new to you. You would have to work weeks, is very realistic, every day for weeks to get to that speed. So the danger of me playing it like that now is it leads to temptation. Ooh, I want to play it fast. That's, that sounded amazing. I want to do that. <laughs> uh, you, it would actually be quite normal to feel that way. Um, however, Take your time, take your time. Play the hands separate. You're gonna find the hands separate aren't that difficult. Uh, the right hand, you know, the only thing uh, that's the new challenge is the finger switches. Uh, still getting used to that C, excuse me, that descending G scale specifically where you have the crossover to the third finger on B. Uh, but that would be it for the right hand. Your left hand is, you know, two chords, but putting them together is a different story. The first line, measures two and four, are difficult. Uh, again, really any line, any measure where you have uh, busyness. Um, rhythmically, it's great. Both hands are quarter notes in a lot of those lines, but they're doing, doing very different notes. So that's the vertical playing. Actually, I would dig in in those measures when you're practicing and play those measures many, many, many times. Uh, perhaps one beat at a time. So example, first line, second measure. You might just play beats one and two many times until you just feel that's memorized and then go on to, to the third beat. And then eventually all four of it. You could also practice it backwards. And if you practice it backwards, you're really gonna get to know the music. So on measure two on that first line, start on beat four. Now you gotta go through and write in your fingering because you don't wanna start that A with any finger. Granted, this is the G position, so chances are you'll play it with a two. But make sure you have the right fingering when you practice backwards. So here's beat four. And of course, the benefit of starting on beat four is I'm going to know it much better than if I continually start on beat one. Beat four may, may get little practice, but if I start on beat four, it's going to be more solid. And then back up beats three and four. And then beats two, three, and four. And then by the time you put the whole measure together and you get to beat four, it's going to be like, huh, that's solid because I'm used to it. I have started there. But if you start at the beginning of the measure and do the beginning of the measure all the time, 
beat four is the last thing you get, it'll have the least amount of practice. So it's kind of a nice feeling to practice backwards because when you're working into something after you've practiced it backwards, it actually feels more secure rather than less secure. Uh, and there's a lot of ways you could do that, but that's just a, one example. So that's how you can tear down those really tough measures you encounter. Um, so vertical practice, line up both hands, uh, get the fingering, you know. As far as rhythms, yes, it's just really working out steadiness. You don't have fancy rhythms here. So just, you know, start slow, but make sure you keep that even four counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you get to measure two and you're going one, two, three, if you're hesitating, that means you're still not comfortable enough with the notes. And you're going to have to go through to this becomes automatic. If that's a problem spot, that little jump there. If you're going, if you're, again, keeping a steady tempo and it's not steady, you're having to stop and think, you got to get to that point where you're not having to stop and think before you can get the steady tempo. Once you got the steady tempo, I would say um, if you're at that point and you're playing it slow, that's good enough to move on to the next piece. But if you really want to take it further and you enjoy the music um, and enjoy this piece in particular, uh, spend a lot more time on it, take a couple weeks, and you can get it up to a, that fast speed. Maybe it's one that you just come back to and play it every day for a good month, and eventually I'll guarantee it'll be a lot faster. Um, and that's about it. The only other thing I saw was it starts loud. See what happens there? As soon as you hit that scale, it, hit, it drops to soft piano. And then it crescendos right away. So working not only the notes of the scale and the fingering, but trying to get it where it's soft and gradually uh, becoming loud again. And then once you hit the forte, that's it until the end of the, end of the piece. So that's, that's one thing you wanna work on too. How do you do that? So basically every note you're trying to make a little bit louder than the next note. The softer you start a crescendo, the more room you have to do that. If you start it too loud, see I don't have much of anywhere to go. But if I start really soft, now I've got more room to do something with it and actually makes it easier. So half of the job I think of making a crescendo work is how soft you start. We're starting it pretty soft, it's marked piano. However, if it was marked mezzo piano, I'd still start soft. And that's a little trick. Uh, always begin your crescendos a little bit softer than what they mark. And that way you can actually have more contrast in your overall crescendo. So that's a little trick you can always do with most of your music. I think that covers everything. So uh, get used to the changing of the fingers on the same note. That would be a handy tool from here on out. And um, the G scale, of course continuing to be uh, smooth and accurate with your fingering in the G scale. The rest of it is learning how to play this particular piece and, and again, coordinating the hands. This, this is a tricky one for that. All right, I wish you all the best. And as always, any questions, comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll do my best to answer them. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.